brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as individuals who naturally reflect. But it is with great sadness that I say that us as human beings, we are a weak creation. And the objectives that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for, we often do not fill, fulfill. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as a creation that reflects, we often reflect upon how can I increase my status in this dunya? How can I increase my wealth in this dunya? How can I have a loftier position in this dunya? While all of these things are permissible to reflect upon, these reflections should not take one away from reflecting upon those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to reflect upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hashar, That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent forth these parables so that indeed mankind may reflect. Now the parables that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down are many. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed various stories and various lessons in the Quran that we may reflect upon. But a reflection that I want to recollect today is not a parable or a story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has narrated in the Quran, but rather it is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our history as Muslims, 1400 years and over, the salah has been the very same from beginning to end. Every musalli, every person that prays starts his salah the exact same way. He does the takbirat al-ihram and then he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. And likewise, 17 times a day, we will recite a surah that begins with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And then in the very third ayah of that surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Rahmah is something so great and so magnificent that he began every single surah of the Quran with this remembrance. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named a surah after it. He said, Ar-Rahman allama al-Quran. That he is Allah, the most beneficent, the one who taught you the Quran. So this is a reflection that we need to rec recollect today, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَرَحْمَةِ وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ That indeed, my mercy has encompassed all things. And if we take a moment and reflect upon this, you will see that this is very, very true. The very eyes that you may see me with today are a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The very ears that you hear me with are a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But these are just basic things that we see, yet we do not appreciate. Then there are more complex things. Think about the system that we breathe with. Each and every moment, we take several breaths. It is something that incurs naturally. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to make a conscious effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our systems in such a way that they need to breathe and they naturally do it. And likewise, the blood that pumps through our veins, is it something that we have to do consciously? It is not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His infinite mercy created our systems in such a way. And likewise, the feelings that we feel, the emotions, when we get happy, it is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are sad, it is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is sadness a mercy? You would not appreciate your happiness if you did not have sadness at the other end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of these things out of His mercy. And again, at the end of the day, it is mankind who is neglectful of these mercies and does not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of them. Having been in the city of Birmingham for only a few days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed each and every one of you with so many blessings that I wish I had in my city of Montreal. From those blessings, how many of us will take these into account? Being in Birmingham, Salat al-Fajr kicks in at 6.50 and ends at 8.30. That means you can pray Qiyam al-Layl from Salat al-Isha up until 6.50 in the morning. If you were to sleep straight after Isha from 7.30 or 8 o'clock up until Fajr time, you would have 10 hours of sleep. None of us needs 10 hours of sleep. Go to sleep early. Wake up early and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted you that ability and that opportunity to pray to Him in the middle of the night. 
to raise your hands and ask him of whatever you wish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you this ample opportunity. Likewise, one of these salahs that Muslims struggle the most with is Salat al-Fajr. There are communities that I have been to that Salat al-Fajr used to start at one o'clock at some times. Imagine that. Over here, Salat al-Fajr finishes at 8.30 or 8.20. You have no excuse to miss Salat al-Fajr because most of you are up at work already, up for work already, getting ready to go. What excuse do you have? This again is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He facilitated Salat al-Fajr for you. And likewise, this very masjid that calls to the aqidah of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah and calls the people to that which is good and to, is correct and likewise facilitates activities for Muslims and non-Muslims and likewise for new Muslims and facilitates activities in terms of sports for the brothers and the sisters and for the youth as well and likewise you have regular halaqas in this masjid and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated for you speakers the likes of Abu Sama and Ahsan Hanif these are from the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many Muslims across the United Kingdom and across the world wish that they had such speakers and such influences in their societies. Yet again, how many of you are thankful of this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, he is often referred to as the fifth Khalifa al Rashida. That the fifth of the rightly guided Khalifas, he used to say, Ya Allah, he used to say that indeed I may not be deserving of your mercy, O Allah, but your mercy has encompassed everything, and I am a thing, so let your mercy encompass me. The Salaf, radiallahu ta'ala anhum wa rahimahum, they recognized the greatness of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was something they regularly and constantly desired. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still tested them with various things. And that is what made them stronger through their tests. In our times, the Muslims have every luxury that they could possibly desire. From wealth, from cars, to houses, to good jobs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them comfort. And it is with great sadness that through all of these mercies, instead of being thankful and using them for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, we have used these mercies to get spun into the spider's web and to become dissolved into this dunya where we only are concerned about our worldly lives. And this is what distinguished the Salaf from us, that they were constantly remembering and seeking the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for their own benefit, not for their own benefit in this life, but for their benefit in the Akhirah. Bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, in the second part of the khutbah, I will discuss how this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should affect us and what we are to do with this. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim aqoolu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa lisair al-muslimin min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Talking about the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa taala, the greatest of mercies that Allah subhanahu wa taala has bestowed upon us is the very reason that we are collected here today. That which unites us, that which makes that which makes us stronger than blood brothers and sisters. That which will take us to paradise. That which is the cause of tranquility and peace. That which is the cause of us entering Jannah and being away from the hellfire. The biggest mercy of all is Al-Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with Islam. And that is what has caused you to be here today. How many individuals are there out in the world today who do not know what their purpose in life is? They beat themselves day and night to find some recourse in their lives to find tranquility to find meaning to their lives 
Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His infinite mercy has blessed you with those answers already. This is from the greatest mercies and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now if you recognize this and you recognize the other great mercies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you, how are we supposed to act and react with the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. We know this and there is no doubt in it. But how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Often as individuals, it helps if there is a story or if there is an example to help us understand things. And this is through the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a lot of lessons are taught to us through stories and, and parables. One of these parables comparing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a beautiful parable related by Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. That one day the companions were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there was a woman who had lost her child. So she would go from child to child looking for it. And as soon as she would find a, find a child, she would put it against her chest and hold it tightly. And then she would realize that this is not her child and she would leave it. And she did this several times until she finally found her child. And then she held her child and the Prophet ﷺ said something to his companions. He said, He said, do you think this woman would ever throw her child into the hellfire? The companions of the Allah Ta'ala, they responded, La wallahi ya Rasulullah. They said, No, by Allah, she would never do so, Ya Rasulullah. Then the Prophet said these beautiful and noble words. He said, Allahu arhamu bi ibadihi min hadihi bi waladiha. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most compassion is more compassionate and more merciful with his slaves than this woman with her child. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to send any one of us to the hellfire. He wants good for us at all times. But we as individuals need to seek that good as well. So one of the ways of seeking this good and seeking this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through making tawbah. Making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an exact correlation with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek His forgiveness. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khairul khatta'een at-tawabun. That indeed, all of the children of Adam are sinners. Each and every one of us commits sins. From the small of them to the big of them. Yet the best of the sinners are those who make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best of the sinners are those who make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has conveyed an important message to us. That indeed through the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts out his hand to forgive the sinners of the night. And indeed in the night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts out his hand to forgive the sinners of the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to forgive us and is willing to forgive us and we just have to seek his forgiveness. Often as human beings, we are weak minded and have weak resolve. So we think that we have committed too much sin for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. We think that we have been too disobedient that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unable to forgive us. Hasha lillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above and beyond this. Brothers and sisters, regardless of which sin you may have committed, whether it may have been shirk, whether you have killed, whether you have stole, whether you have partook in riba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all sins as long as you seek repentance from Him.